Christmas is coming and I have put a whole bunch of work in designing a bunch of new designs for the Christmas season. They are up and available now on the website at phyllisuper.com and they will only be here for a limited time up through the new year. So make sure to grab them now because any order before December 1st will guaranteed be shipped at the beginning of the month. So that means that they will be here for Christmas time. So go ahead and give everything a look and snag yourself something warm, something cozy, and something that represents your car passion for this holiday season. This whole last week I have been out sick. I've been incapacitated. I've been dying. But now we're back and we have a whole lot of work to do today. For starters, we need to work on the Miata because there's some things that I want to fix. Like first off, I just want to get that top closed. I haven't been able to do it yet. I got some ratchet straps. We're going to force that thing closed so it can get itself sealed in place. And finally, and most importantly, I, uh, I need to drop the transmission. Woohoo. So what had happened was I pulled this car out of the garage in order to get it cleaned up to get all the dust off of it, at least off the outside so I can get it more prepared to paint. And then I'd go over our last couple things before I decided to go and actually take it down to get it painted. But I pulled it outside just fine. Everything was working. And when I left it outside idling for about 15, 20, 30 minutes, when I tried to pull it back into the garage, the transmission just would not go into gear. Like I could shift it into the gears, but it wouldn't actually do anything. So I'm going to drop off the transmission. I'm going to take off the lightweight flywheel because I think that's what's causing the problems. But in addition, as I was bringing it back down, unfortunately I was in there, I had the door open and the door caught on the back of this Miata, completely ripping it open. And now all the hinges and everything are waxed, so I need to go ahead and try to fix that too. But I can't get to it until I can get the transmission off because this is too close to this other Miata. Uh, all sorts of issues. In summary, we just have a lot of things to do. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by trying to get that roof tied up, and then we'll meet up after that. Let's get going. All right, so that was probably a really uneventful time lapse, but it's kind of better. This is really frustrating, I'm gonna be honest. It's just, I got this one to latch. I couldn't get this other one to latch, but it just doesn't want to completely stretch out. I mean, I can't shut the door on this side because the window's hitting the top here. And I know I didn't pull it too far forward because you could see here on the edge where the black is, is starting to peel back where it's just being pulled so, so tightly. And in addition, they have holes drilled out where each bolt is supposed to go and they're all perfectly in, including in the back, but it's just, it's so, so tight right now that it just doesn't want to form. So this is a continuing issue. We're just gonna have to move past it for now. It's really frustrating to know that even after everything, we're gonna have to come back and address this. It's not where I want it to be, but it's where we're at, so. So the next thing that we need to do is to get the transmission dropped out. Now I started on this already, but I'll let you guys know where we're at because it's it's not quite near being done. So I've already started by disconnecting a lot of stuff on the inside of the engine bay. So that includes the exhaust. Intake obviously is out of the way, which let us get access to the exhaust. And now I need to do a bunch of stuff on the underside of the engine in order to make it able to get the transmission dropped out. So this includes a bunch of stuff like taking off the rest of the exhaust as well as all the transmission bolts that go around the transmission that I'll be able to pull it out, get the flywheel off, and then drop that down. Now I'm going to go ahead and just catch you guys up once we get this actually dropped off because because I've tried filming it before and there's really no way that I can get you guys a decent enough angle that you can actually tell what's going on. So I'll go ahead and catch you guys up once I get this all dropped off and I'll show you what we're replacing and then how we're to replace it and we'll be all set to go after that. And hopefully this should solve our transmission issue. I'm pretty sure that it is because I've tried the flywheel on my red Miata before and it gave me issues then as well. And I really just wanted to give it a shot because it's an upgraded flywheel, but apparently it's just not working. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off, put the original one back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to work and then I'll see you guys in a little bit the next day. All right, you're looking at the clutch and flywheel and pressure plate all right there. We're gonna take all three of those off so that way we can replace the flywheel with a stock flywheel and then put that pressure plate and clutch back on because that would be the original trio that was on the car when I first bought it. So hopefully that'll work just fine. It should. And then after that, we'll just mount everything back up and meet up outside. I only pulled the transmission back a little bit and it's still setting up on a jack stand right now because I didn't want the gearbox oil leaking out of the back because it takes so long to refill. I just wanted to try and save some time there, which I've done before hopefully it should work. So we're all set to go in this regard. Good, good progress. I'm excited to see this back on and together and hopefully that'll give us an ability to get this car moving. Whole lot of good progress being made. A lot of lying on my back on cold concrete too. So this is awesome.
one hour later. All right, we got the transmission back on. We got the car on the ground, and it's time to go ahead and give this a start and try to see if we can get it moving. Now, unfortunately, we actually only have this little section to get it moving because, uh, well, one of the battery cables snapped on here, so now I had something else to do. Yay. So let's go ahead and just hop in and see if we can get this at least moving forward and back, and then uh, hopefully we can kind of shuffle it over to the side a bit because we still need to inspect the door that I, that I kind of smashed. So, uh, yeah. All right, let's hop in and see if we can get this moving. After hours of work, it turns out the clutch wasn't even the problem. Oh, I just wasted so much time. Yeah, so as it turns out, the clutch wasn't actually the problem. I figured that out after because it made zero difference. It's it's probably the slave cylinder. So what I'm going to do next is bleed the slave cylinder or the whole clutch system and see if that can help me uh, get to a solution because this, this is a bummer. So uh, yeah, it is what it is. But we're gonna go ahead and hook up the bleeding system to the clutch and see if we can get that bled and have it working. Seeing as how it was working when I first started, when I first got the car going, my guess is just something in the system, there was a bubble or something got trapped, and I'm hoping I could pressure bleed that out, we should be okay from there. So anyway, that's the next step for where we're at. Let's just time lapse that and get it going again, because at this point, we're just uh, chugging away, trying to get these issues knocked out so we can get this moving, because we're so close, and I just, I just wanna get to the point where we can paint it. I wanna paint it. <laughs> it's frustrating to see it in this spot where it's looking good, but we just can't do anything with it now. I mean, aside from missing the headlights, this is, this is, this is just where we wanna be, but we obviously can't paint it because we can't can't move it, so let's just get this going. I am officially stumped. So I bled the clutch and it didn't work, so I replaced the slave cylinder and that didn't work. And so then I replaced the master cylinder and that didn't work. So, so far we've replaced the flywheel, the master, the slave cylinder, bled the whole system. Not a single bit of difference. Like genuinely, there's actually zero difference in the way that the clutch engages with the transmission. And I, I know it's a clutch issue because I could put the car in gear when I put it in first and I let the clutch out. I'll hear some grinding, but when I push the clutch in, it's fine. So it's not the internal gearing on the transmission, but I, I'm just out of ideas, honestly, at this point. I, I don't know what else to throw at it. I don't get why it even went wrong in the first place, to be honest. Um, I don't know what would cause something while sitting in idle, not in gear for 30 minutes to all of a sudden then just stop working completely. I, I don't get it. I don't know. I'm stumped. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know because I, I have nothing. Woohoo the next day all right here's the deal so i accidentally did not turn my mic on this has happened before and it has continued to be an issue so anyway i turned the car on to try to test and see what exactly what was going on see if i could figure something out i put it in gear and i noticed that the actual miles per hour were increasing which to me indicates that the transmission is spinning which means the clutch has to engage so i stuck a camera underneath to see if i could see the drive line spinning and this is what i saw <laughs> So as you can see, the drive line is actually spinning, which means that the issue is now at the differential. That's our point of failure. I don't know exactly what's going on, but that's our point of failure. So I'm gonna take the differential off of our donor car that we've been taking everything from, put that onto our actual car that we're using, and then hopefully, hopefully that should fix our issue because at least we now have the point narrowed down to the back of the car and we know that all the work that we wasted the time doing in the front, it's not that. So anyway, time to rip some differentials off. So I got the differential out and cleaned it up and it's sitting here ready to go back in and then I got the other differential out and uh, you may notice something was wrong with it. So I think that's our culprit. What was happening was it was trying to spin this one and it was the most freely spinning because it wasn't really connected because the differential was falling off and since it's an open diff and not a limited, limited slip differential, it uh, wouldn't let this other wheel that was connected spin. So uh, yeah, looks like that was the issue. Let's get this new one back in.
I got this. <laughs> this is awesome. I got this wash gun sent out to me by AutoVise and it comes with a whole bunch of different options that you could use to spray your car, that you can use to fill up with all sorts of soaps to your heart's content. It comes with an attachment to hook up with a pressure washer and they have a whole bunch of other stuff on their website. So if you're ever in the mood where you're trying to find something wacky for your car and some weird accessory that you didn't know exists, AutoVise probably has it. So go ahead and give their website a look. It's the first link in the description down below. Thank you so much for your support in this video and let's get back to work. Well, you guys were being lazy and watching the ad. I actually fixed the differential, so you're welcome. But we're at the point where it should be able to test and see that it's actually running. So let's set up the camera, see if we can get this to actually go into gear and even better, move. All right, so with this moving now, the next thing that we need to do, and the final thing that we should need to do is address the door. Now, as I mentioned briefly before, what had happened is when the differential broke, when I had the car out here washing it, I had to coast it back to get into the garage, and unfortunately, I had the door open, it caught on this Miata, and absolutely ripped the door open 90 degrees, and so now, the whole door is shifted forward a bit. So what this means is I need to take this fender off in order to get access to the door hinges, so that way I could take the hinges off and try to hopefully pound them back into place, or at least that's the hope, because I don't have a backup door with me right now and uh, I kind of need this one to work. So we're going to go ahead and pull this fender off and then hopefully we should be able to get the door fixed up. This idiot forgot to turn his camera on and record again. So I'm really dumb. Um, <laughs> I forgot to turn the camera on, but it's fixed. So it looks like 0% different from before, but now the door opens and shuts. Top is closed, that shuts, diff is fixed. We're good to go. What do you say we take it for a test drive? All right, we're all loaded up. Um... What's the worst that could happen? I guess we'll find out. All right, let's go. That drives really smooth. Wow. This is so much smoother than my red Miata. This is actually insanely smooth. What the heck? Wow. That was awesome. We successfully took it on his first test drive. I checked the engine bay. There's no leaks, nothing. Everything is looking great. Oh, what a coincidence. We're at the paint booth. See you guys next time.